All right, James Gandolfini, Brad Pitt, mob movie, death, robbery. There's no way this movie's gonna bore me, right? Just, that won't happen. Killing Them Softly. So Killing Them Softly is about a robbery that happens, then Brad Pitt's this hitman, he gets brought in by the higher-ups of the mob, and you never see them, but you hear that they're like, hey, Brad Pitt, can you just deal with this situation? So now the situation needs to be dealt with, how hitmen deal with situations. And in that, we have this movie, which is a very realistic take on this situation. I say that because you know how reality is never as interesting as the movies? It's like you think being a police officer would be exciting, it's not. That's kind of this movie. You see it, you're like, oh yeah, if this were a movie, it would be more exciting and more interesting interesting to me. Only thing is this is the movie about this situation, so it should be more interesting than it comes across as. Now I'll talk about what I liked about this movie. There are a few things in this movie that I did like. First of all, the acting. The acting was out of this world. It was awesome. Brad Pitt completely kills it as his hitman. He's really efficient. You get the feeling he's like the best of the best in his field of work. If you have a really big problem involving a couple of screw-ups that, you know, do a robbery, you bring in Brad Pitt. Even the main two guys who did the robbery, they were really good. One of them was the dude from Argo. I feel like you're gonna see this guy in a lot more movies now. This was the movie where he's like, hey, not only was I in Argo, but I can show my acting talent in this movie. He'll get more work, that's for sure. The other guy is Daggett from The Dark Knight Rises, who in this movie, you're like, well, all right, this guy's a really good actor. Because Daggett's all like upper class, like, where do they get these guys? Then you see this guy and you're like, holy shit, Daggett, what happened? It's like if Daggett in The Dark Knight Rises lived long enough for Bane's whole plan to come through and he had to like live in the sewers and shit, he would look like Daggett in this movie. I'm gonna call him Daggett forever. James Gandalf Feeney's in this movie and half of me is like, oh, he did a really good job. The other half was like, what was the point of him being in this movie other than just to say that James Gandolfini was in this movie? You just get to see a guy who's at rock bottom. Which you can argue that seeing him feeds into the whole message of this movie. This movie has a really big message that the director wants to get across. I get that. But all in all, it just felt like they wanted James Gandolfini in this movie. I mean, right before the main robbery goes down, it had a couple of really funny moments where I was like, oh, that's cool. So that's the kind of movie I'm in for. But it wasn't. The witty dialogue and the humor it ended right there. I thought this was going to be a total dialogue movie and there's a lot of dialogue in the movie, but it doesn't feel like a cool dialogue movie because none of it's really memorable. I just don't think people are going to be quoting Killing Them Softly five years from now. They will probably quote the end monologue by Brad Pitt. I get that. I mean, I like mob movies. I like dialogue-based movies. I like dialogue-based mob movies. Killing Them Softly really didn't find its niche because it just felt like it was all over the place. Like he wanted to be this now and then this now and then this now. It's like the director had 157 concepts and thoughts in his mind for this movie. He spread himself too thin so none of them really really shine. The actors really shine, but that's because they're good actors. I get that there's probably a demographic out there who this movie's made for them. I'm not that demographic. NYU hipster film students are going to love this movie. I actually have conversations with myself about rating movies like this. I'm all like, I mean, it really, it did have good acting and the, that was cool. And the slow-mo scenes were cool. Oh my God, stop it. Just say it. What? Say what's on your mind. The movie bored you. So just say it. Well, I'll illustrate that. I don't want to come across- Don't want to what? Come across as honest? I was going to say an asshole, but- Well, there is one consistent in life. They're always seen as the same thing anyway. Well, there is that. Through the majority of the movie, were you bored? For the majority of the movie, did the movie bore you? Uh, well, yeah, it was pretty boring. Rest my case? God, I hate it when I have a point. Actually, I like it. You mean when we have a point? Don't worry, they won't even think it's as weird as you visioning your subconscious in a leather jacket because that is weird. But ultimately, killing them softly, there's one of these at least every year. Is a tour de force. For those of you who don't know what that is, it means it's a boring ass artsy movie that does have its quality and its demographic, but it's just not me and it just ended up boring me. I will say it like this, and I'm not even joking around, I'm not even bullshitting, I'm not even trying to be a smart ass. If you like the movie Drive, you might like this movie. So take that into consideration when you hear the rating. Don't just go on the rating. Go on that information also. In fact, I'd be interested to know if you liked Drive and didn't like this movie, I would... Tell me. Alright, so your favorite movie involving a hitman. I was gonna say mob movie. I'm pretty sure I've asked you that before. But hitman, it's kind of different. It's a faction of mob, but not really the mob. Whatever your favorite one is, comment below. Let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.